Hey people, so I made another rocket. This time it is fully autonomous, meaning it can launch itself into an orbit and uh, deploy a satellite and then point the satellite towards the planet. Um, so yeah, I think we should just launch it instead of talking beforehand. So I made this little very janky looking erection uh, system. So yeah. Should probably have made it go on both axes at the same time. Oh well. A lot of this is um, a last minute thought. Anywho, let us just turn on jetpack and smack the emptiness on that. And press launch. <coughs> so. As with the last rocket, it uh, well, it didn't really need to look like this. A lot of it is hollow. I think there's like four. I think there's. I think there's like four hydrogen tanks in there, um, because hydrogen engines are just stupidly overpowered. Had to go with the small ones as well uh, instead of the big ones because it would just uh, accelerate too rapidly. Anyhow, it is all controlled by a programmable block, um, which does a lot of crazy things because my code is an absolute mess, but somehow it works. Uh, yeah, it's basically an exponential function that takes uh, the altitude for x and it then adjusts its pitch accordingly. So it'll go up to, I think it's 13 or 16 kilometers. Uh, before it is at a 90 degree angle, uh, so basically um, tangential to the planet. After that it will cut off the first stage and post on. So, yeah, it, uh, it pitches rather quickly in the, the end here, so it should happen soon. go now a few seconds should pass and pop there we go bye bye first stage that should impact the planet again because it's uh, not at sufficient speed to orbit now it'll boost up to 825 meters per second and then goes to apoapsis which is uh, the highest point in its orbit and then it should try circularizing so yeah uh, this is I won't say it's hard coded uh, but there's a lot of things it doesn't take into account and I already also had to fiddle with it quite a bit because uh, space engineers gravity is just it's weird man uh, oh yeah we cut off so now it'll coast to the apoapsis it'll take a while um, but yeah space engineers gravity is really janky so I can go into a circular orbit of about, I think it goes into 24, 25 kilometers, and it stays there for an orbit. It drifts out slowly, and it'll just keep increasing the orbit. Uh, over the course of an hour, it'll go out to about 35 kilometers, I think, and it seems to taper off, so the further it gets, the less the orbit will increase, but uh, with a given uh, initial energy, it will just increase its orbit magically, as if it's gaining energy from uh, orbiting. I think that's because space engineers gravity isn't really made for orbit, since you normally can't. But uh, yeah, there's some other artifacts, uh, but I'll take them at the end of the video. Right now I'll just speed up time and uh, resume once we get to Apolapsis. Alright, so yeah, we just kind of missed that actually. It just circularized, and um, there we go, ejecting the fairings. And in a few seconds, we should eject the first stage, second stage that is. I'll just dampen on the satellite instead. And it should turn towards the planet and align the solar panels. There we go. And solar panels deploying. Now they're green even though we're in the shadow of the planet, but uh, apparently they're seeing the sun. Uh, it's a very simple setup.
satellite. Well, basically, yeah, it was mm, mostly an afterthought, actually. So uh, we got a few uh, laser antennas, which one of which will connect to the base when we are above the base. Uh, which takes me to the next part of the video. We're going to do this all again, but this time we are going to stay underground and let the rocket do its own thing. So, be right back. Alright, we are back. So, yeah, this time we're just going to launch the rocket uh, by itself. And it should launch into orbit, circular planet once, and then connect to this laser antenna over here, which we will be able to see over here. This uh, timer starts counting up when we launch the rocket. This is from my test, the amount of time it took it to go a full orbit and then connect. And this lamp here turns green when it is connected to the satellite. So yeah, there she goes. I really wish we had a s some way of just making these engines roar as it moves up. But um, alas, this is what we have. So yeah, it should take about 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, also had a time when it was like 10 minutes and 20, so I'll come back at 10 minutes 15 and let's see. Alright, we should be close to making a connection, hopefully. Assuming something hasn't gone wrong, but it worked the last two times, so uh, let's see. There we go, first contact, 10 minutes, 30 seconds. So now that should be connected. Not sure what way it's pointing that way, so our satellite's out there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Comes at 65 kilometers. Since it's connected via an, an antenna, we should be able to access it from in here. And I forgot to rename it. So let's just see here. There we go. Camera view. And there we have it. Satellite view of the world. Now, I. The satellite was kind of an afterthought. So I didn't think about the placement of the laser antennas. Now I placed four in it because I thought well, satellite being able to communicate with other stuff, and yeah. But uh, them being on the side, and especially me having access one in the direction of the orbit, means that shortly after passing over the base, I will lose connection, since we won't be able to pivot. In any case, we won't be able to see the base itself, um, because... That's a Facebook message. Because uh, you can't see structures from this distance, sadly. It would be pretty cool to be able to get a satellite view of the, the base. But uh, alas, we should be passing over it momentarily though, so we can uh, zoom in and uh, yeah, see nothing. But it is what it is. I really wish the detail would increase as you zoom, that would be so very cool. I mean, you get the basic terrain, but no structures as you can see. So yeah, that is basically it um, for my launch system at least. I got one more thing I want to show, but to show that I will have to go to the moon. So uh, hang on a bit. Alright, off we go. So yeah, it's going to be a little while, so I'm just going to fast forward and uh, see you in a bit. Alright, so finally on the moon. Now, the interesting thing is, normally you would be pulled down straight towards the center. Uh, let's just get here. So, as you may notice, I am not uh, falling in the right direction. I am actually falling a bit more towards Earth, to be exact. That is because, um, well, I increased the as with the last rocket, I increased the max speed, but I also increased, uh, well, rather decreased the, the gravity fall off from 7 to 1. So the gravity of the planet is actually present out here uh, pretty strongly. I think it's at about 0.3 or 0.4 Gs. 
In any case, it uh, kind of messes with the natural gravity of the moon. So basically, I'll fall kind of to the side of the Earth. And uh, if I'm on the opposite side of the moon compared to the planet Earth, um, then this gravity will be stronger. But if I am on the face directly facing the planet, then I'll just fall straight off the moon. As you can see here, we're just uh, we're basically uh, uh, on a tangent uh, on the moon, pointing towards Earth, and uh, we're falling. Uh, well, what can be construed as sideways. Uh, if I get a bit further, I should just fall straight towards the planet. So, uh, yeah. The, I guess that is why they don't have uh, realistic gravity ranges in uh, space engineers, because uh, well, I actually wonder how far it extends. No, it shouldn't extend to the other planets, even though it goes pretty far. But yeah, that is uh, this is all I have. Uh, I just thought it would be an interesting little tidbit. I discovered it by accident when I hit the moon. By accident, somehow. Um, yeah, that is all. Uh, I'm gonna put the workshop link for the safe game, since the gravity uh, range is tied to the safe game, in the description below. Remember, if you want to use it, you have to increase the max speed to, uh, well, I have it at 2000, you need to increase it to at least 1000 meters per second for this same game to work. Uh, you're free to look at my code and use it for whatever, but uh, be warned, you'll probably go mad. Not because my code is uh, advanced or complex, but it is an absolute mess. Um, because I am... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a good programmer. I am self-taught and only like basic scripts, microcontrollers and stuff like that. Um, so I'm not used to keeping it tidy. Anyhow, tangent. Um, yeah, safe game in the description. Uh, take care, have fun, thank you for watching, and uh, see ya.